Hi, Pia. Hi, Emily. So we're just doing Miami today. It feels weird. I know it does. It feels naked. Um, do you know on my do you know any of the players they're talking about, like Anna, the chick Anna that they're speaking? No, none of that. No, I was just like, but she seems like a real bitch, apparently. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so we'll get into that. All right, let's just do it. We cold open on one of those really cool, like over dramatic, no context moments, you know, where Alexia's like, You're pathetic. You're pathetic. And then it's like 72 hours earlier. I'm such a sucker. I always fall for those and get excited. I mean, editing, good editing is good editing. I like it. They're telling a story here. Mm hmm. Uh, SLC does that a lot. SLC yes. loves the cold open, the dramatic, and then like they do, they, they do, do it, but they kind but of overuse it. If I, if I was I actually going to say that, I was like, it's a little too much. Like the whole like biblical yeah. aspect that they did, like maybe because also they're not really good at acting, so it just feels forced. Oh, that that like trailer thing that they did. Yeah, I, I hate it. It's always cringy, and it always replays when I'm done. See, I, like, I find it, I find it funny, which I guess is kind of the same as cringy. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very, it's like so silly, like the way yes. Monica and Lisa like pass each other. Like, I yes, it's too much. <laughs> I can't. It's so funny. It's so so cheesy. Oh, um, what? sorry, then you got me wanting to talk about Salt Lake. <laughs> you got me wanting to talk oh. about Salt Lake. Uh, like, it's a whole other can of worms. I know. I want her back. I want Monica back, but I feel like she's not going to get asked back because I don't think Andy likes her either. Did Andy have a moment with her? Well, I was I saw a clip of Jeff Lewis's podcast and he had Andy on, but I was just listening to it. So it could either be Jeff Lewis saying that she doesn't like Monica or I couldn't tell if it was Andy's voice that said that. Said I don't like Monica. Yeah, because they're like the cast isn't vibing. That with- is one hundred percent Jeff Lewis, because Andy okay. would never Andy would never like outwardly okay. say that. I listened to it many times and I did th- I do think that that's who you're right. It was Jeff Lewis. But I think that Monica, like, this has been the best season so far. I feel like we got to keep Monica. I think they will keep her. Okay. <laughs> um, Alexia takes her son Peter furniture shopping. And honestly, at this point, Alexia, stop. Like, you're, you don't know Peter's history, probably, do you? you? You told me that he's the rebel, bad, problematic child. Like, does he have, like, maybe some essay allegations or something like that? Uh, it wasn't essay, but it was domestic violence. Okay. And it was with a girlfriend. And Alexia has, of course, like, denied everything. And they're fighting it. And they're going to get the charges dropped and stuff. And okay. the, the girlfriend did drop the charges. But isn't that also very common in domestic violence situations? Oh, 100%. That's a very common thing. People stay with their abusers for a long time as a cycle. Uh, Totally. So Alexia was using that like, well, and the charges were dropped. So that's proof right there. It's like, "Eh, that's not proof. So so she's never, Alexia's never answered to her son's antics. But Peter was problematic even in the original. He was like trying to beat up a homeless guy. No. Yeah, like he's not, like he's been a problem. And like her... Baby daddy, their their dad, she really skirted over this, but she he was he was one of the cocaine cowboys. I know I've told you this. Oh, forgot about that. Yeah. So but he Yes, was, you did he, say that. He was arrested somewhat recently and she was like, and he's in prison now for some other stuff. Well, someone looked it up and he's in prison now because of like messing around with a 14 year old. Oh my God. Yeah, it was like that was the charge. That's- that's bad. That's bad. And she bad. just skirts right over that. And Peter, her, the son, he just loves his dad, thinks his dad's so cool. So, like, there's such darkness over in that family. But because they have Frankie, who's disabled due to an accident, he got in a car accident. Oh, and did we ever see him prior to that? Did we ever get to know him before pre-accident? Or we I just don't... got introduced to him after that. Why don't I remember that? I don't know how I can even like look it up. Can you help me get on your phone and start looking these things up? Okay, okay, okay. If you're going to ask questions. <laughs> if I'm going to ask questions. Um. Uh, so let's see. What's his name? Frankie. His accident was when he was 13. Oh, that was young. What year would that have been though? It says August of 2011. That's when the accident was? That's what it says. Um, Frankie was riding in the passenger seat when he was involved in a traumatic car accident in August of 2011. But I don't remember if we met him and then like, did we meet him and then over like the break that happened? It says, um, hold on, it says right here. 
the then 13-year-old was in a coma in a pediatric hospital for three months so the swelling in his brain could go down. He spent another three months in the hospital recovering. During this time, Alexia took a step back from the show. She appeared in a limited role in the second season. So it's seeming like... So she wa- So the first season, we did meet him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That'd be interesting to go back then to see. Damn. And I didn't... 13. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Whoa, 13. That's so I didn't I don't know why I thought maybe it was like he was 18? older. Yeah, 13. I, I kind of remembered it like that too to be honest. I didn't realize that we saw that happen. Wow, like that is Well, Pia, help, thank you for finding that. What article did you get? What article did you end up finding? It is called distractify.com. Ah, that was the next one I was going to. It was like the first one that popped up for me, but I think I, I just literally put Frankie car accident and then that's, it popped up. Oh, see, I, I got didn't too e- fancy with it. I usually do too, honestly. I get too wordy, which is why I hate Googling. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, R-H-O-M, Frankie, yeah. Alexia, first season. Like, why am I, I also, doing that? I was also really scared by your tone of find it, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like that was uh, <laughs> or else. <laughs> it kind of was. <laughs> hey, I know what that tone is. My mom gave me that tone a lot growing up, so I knew what I had to do. <laughs> uh, okay, now we find out that they need to get out of the apartment, Alexia and Todd. They need to, and Frankie, and Frankie. Like, that's also something that we need to point out. Frankie right. lives there too, and it's like he's dependent on all of the, so many things. Yeah. There. So, uh, allegedly, the owner sold the apartment that they've been in for six years and is only giving them 15 days right. to leave. That's kind of weird. Six years is a long time to be paying someone rent and have them just be like, fuck you. Yeah, I feel like they wouldn't do that. I I would think because it's like you've been so loyal. Like you would know that they were even thinking about selling. Right. They'd they'd have given you a heads up at least. Like just so you know, any day now we're going to sell this thing. Unless they're that dense and they he had said that and they just didn't care. And then the day came and then they were panicking. Because like that, it doesn't track that that guy that they've literally paid rent to for whatever six times 12 is would be like, too bad. With yeah. your with your special needs son. And also, I'm sure that he probably would, since they've been living there, wouldn't he probably ask them if they would be interested in buying it? Exactly. Before putting it on the market because that would make the most exactly. sense. Exactly. No, th- none of it. Tr- Todd is lying to Alexia. I can tell Alexia, Ale- Alexia, and you'll probably never unsee it, Alexia and Teresa Judice are so yeah. similar. That, and mm-hmm. it's very like, She's being told by the asshole guy that, you know, stuff's been taken care of. But I'm like, Todd, have you not been paying rent? Such a good comparison. It's such a good com- – It she is. They're, and they're like really good friends too. They are so identical. Willfully ignorant. Uh-huh. And like for a man, like very traditional, just so, so, so similar. You're going to see like- so many parallels. Yeah, because you're that's so true. Because even from like that first episode, just that whole dynamic and her like clearly lying for him, and oh my god, and it's so painful because everyone can see it's not even good lying. It's- and and they get that blank stare. Yes, where like they're like what? Yes. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to unsee it. You're right. Right. So that's what this is giving me. Because Todd is like, when we get to the scene with Todd at his office, is even. Freakier. Oh, even the tone deafness of her oh. with um, uh, Julia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that is something Teresa would do, too, I feel And be like. like, what? I was just kidding. Yep. Very. Joke. Get it. Ha ha. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> so, she is her. You're so mm-hmm. good. <laughs> uh, Julia's farm. Adriana goes to visit her on the farm. They show a flashback, though, of Martina being like, see all this? This is everything that you're spending. So you need to make money in order to keep going. And she's like, hmm. Julia's like, okay. But then she claims that Martina doesn't help her 
financially with the farm. Uh huh. But I'm like, well, then how? She uses her check from the show. It, yeah, she uses her check. That's probably got to be. That's it, right? She just. Like, I feel like she completely uses that whole check for that farm. <laughs> yeah, that's why Martina's no like, leftover money. Martina's like, do you see here? You're just. And she's all Julia's all proud of herself. She's like, I'll never let, I'll never let Martina have anything to do with the farm. She's like, Martina's like, I don't want anything to do with the farm. She's that's like, what I'm I've trying been telling to help you. you out. I'm trying to make sure you know that this is bad news. But okay, fine. So, so this farm is not attached to her house because I don't know why in my head it was. Uh, I, I yeah, it seems no. It's like far, it's somewhat far from their house. So who takes care of him when she drives away? I don't know. That's all. Um, that's what I was concerned maybe about. That's, I, maybe that. Maybe that's who like the like gets get paid. Like when Martina's showing her the money. Maybe like that's yeah. like, there's like a staff there. Because I was really concerned when she started driving away. I was like, who who's <laughs> watching all these animals? Like they just it's a free for all. It's Animal Farm over there. Like what the fuck? <laughs> it's like Animal Farm over there. Like I just feel like they should be supervised. Yeah, and Martina so. does not. Martina does not enjoy the farm. She's not about that farm life. She's about that city life. So this has been a point of contention in the relationship i mean yeah <laughs> it's totally different lives like Can't if you just- if you want to go live on a farm you don't also want to probably well maybe you want to do both no one, i like, don't com- no one commutes and owns a farm they live on the farm that's why i was so confused yeah yeah so that's a lifestyle choice you wake up at 6 a.m and uh-huh. you start tending to the fields or something she would if she could but martina and then also Martina got cancer, so she's not gonna she's gonna do whatever Martina wants. So this right. farm this farm business is just yeah. Mm-mm. But Julia and Adriana talk about the Lisa intervention dinner, and obviously Adriana thinks that Lisa was ganged up on. Uh, Mm -hmm. And Adriana does say what I said, which is like Alexia is in no position to be giving like relationship advice, right? And then she lights up like a Christmas tree, and she's like, "A little bird told me that Todd and Alexia are having financial issues." Well, she this is the problem. Adriana gives her plots away too obviously. Like when Mm -hmm. you're. If you want to bring something up casually and act like it's, oh, I just heard about this. Don't be beaming from ear to ear. Like, ah, I have something to tell you. I know, especially when you're supposed to have made up. Yes. It was, it was like. <laughs> like, you're this, you're, you're being too obvious with what your plan, what your plan is. Because if Anna Kinsonas, I can never say her name right, is the bird, this woman hates Alexia and Marisol. Yeah, so she has everything to gain by, like, embellishing or lying. Exactly. She's she's not necessarily a credible source. Exactly. You need to get get it from her and someone else in order to believe it. You can't just get it from her. Right. And take it as fact. Um, Although she is very transparent in what she's doing, Adriana, um, I still enjoy it. Oh, well, (laughs) yeah, she's like the little – she's like the little – I mean, it's – coming after Alexia and Marisol is not too shabby. Yeah. I don't care. Like, you can go ahead yeah. and take them down. They suck. <laughs> yeah. But she – because she was besties with Anna. And uh, the flash – the montage flashback that they used for Anna just showed that the producers don't like her either. They mm. only showed these, like, vicious things that Anna said. But Anna was miserable. I didn't okay. enjoy her her energy on the show. She was just mean. Oh. Is she like that one lady on Potomac that keeps coming at, going after uh- – the Grand Dame. I don't like her. Uh, who is that? She's the one who said she brought the whole group together. Giselle? No. Oh, Sharice. Sharice. <laughs> is, is she like that's a Sharice? That's so funny that that's your assessment of Sharice. Yeah, I don't like her. Yeah. <laughs> she's, is, she's not in this season, is she? Did I miss something? No, she was on last season, but I thought she was going to come back like as a friend of. Maybe she will. I see. Yeah, I've seen like clips I Maybe I'm, but maybe I'm like mistaking them with last season. I feel no. I think that, I think she is going to make up an right? appearance at some point, probably at that big brawl. Oh yeah, I'm not really. F- I haven't watched Potomac in a few weeks, so I'm a little behind. Oh, that reminds me. I actually need to finish it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm behind too. I don't. I'm not loving this season. It's very upsetting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going through its its dud phase. Unfortunately. I knew it was – last season I felt that way. I was like, I can see what everyone's doing too much. Like Ashley and Giselle can like see exactly what they're doing and it's like embarrassing. Yeah, it's – Like it's, with, it's, that, with that Sesame Street friend, uh, Ashley's. God. And she's going – and she's coming back too. She's coming back. Oh, Deborah. What was her – Deborah, Yes, right? Deborah. Deborah. Mm-hmm. I, her eyebrows pissed me off. Yeah, no, they're actually not okay. 
<laughs> Help a friend out. <laughs> and it's not she's pretty. <laughs> yes. It's not what I'm saying, but it's the per- Help her out her though. Eyebrows, somebody. Those eyebrows piss it's a bold eyebrow and I just- <laughs> It's such a it's such a choice. It's an expressive eyebrow. Like we need to <laughs> microblade them correctly and call it a day because it's yeah. like all I see when her face comes on. I'm like, all I see is eyebrow. I know it's kind of like people. I, I guess I do like judge people's eyebrows. Like I shouldn't. Like I don't even have any to be judging. But um, yeah, I there are a handful of Bravo people that their eyebrows piss me off. Like Brittany Hart. Who? Hart, who uh- Hart, <laughs> Brittany's, Brittany's eyebrows piss me off lala's i mean sometimes her eyebrows piss me off too no lala's and britney's both do the same thing and like i get botox so i get confused as to what their doctors are doing because their eyebrows go so high hate, up with this yeah. high arch yeah it's a villain a villain arch that's what yeah I call it. lala had a moment on like her third or fourth season where she if she had stopped there with like the lip and the other stuff it would have been great yeah but they always – I think you start to see – I know I've talked about this. You see things on camera mm-hmm. when you watch yourself back. Like you're like staring at stuff. Like does that look weird? Yeah. I feel – you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, a yeah, doctor yeah. can fix that, right? I swear. It's got to like trip you out. Yeah. And it's just fun because it's funny. It's like they're still – they're very beautiful women. But it's just something – those eyebrows. Because this is something you can adjust. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> these are choices that we can fix very easily. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. That was a yeah. tangent. That was tangent. Yeah. Eyebrow tangent. <laughs> What is this, honey? This is that time of year where I am overindulging so much to such an extreme when I go to a party. Like I ate an entire tin of cookies by myself. That in between the festivities, I'm craving clean foods. I just want to eat like a nutritionist would want me to eat. Well, that is why I love Green Chef because it is the number one meal kit for eating clean. Not only do they have 80 plus weekly options that change every week featuring delicious nutritionist approved recipes, you can mix and match your meals to meet your lifestyle needs, including quick and easy, protein packed, calorie smart, Mediterranean, I think I'm going to give that one a shot for 2024, keto, gluten free, plant based. But the other thing that's fab is you don't have to lose track of healthy eating habits during the holiday because every Green Chef customer customer gets a free session with a registered dietitian. Hello, they can walk you through how to make clean eating work for you and you can sign up and start your journey toward a better healthy life today. Also very important, they offset 100% of their delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Plus nearly all packaging materials are curbside recyclable in most areas in the U.S. So with Green Chef, you're reducing your food waste by up to 23% versus grocery shopping. They deliver everything you need to eat clean the easy way. This December, nourish your body with chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes packed with clean ingredients that support your lifestyle and taste delish too. Green Chef is also helping me do two things with my dad. One, keeping him busy because he likes cooking the meals. And two, eating better because it's healthier food. So it's a total win-win. It gets delivered to the door. He feels like it's magic. He makes the food, we eat the food, and I'm like, see, Dad, you've gotten all these lean proteins and fresh vegetables. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go watch TV. And I say, Merry Christmas. Go to greenchef.com slash 60 she speaks and use code 60 she speaks to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Okay, greenchef.com slash 60, 60, she speaks, and use code 60, she speaks to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. Shut up! That is so stupid! I have never been more grateful for my microdose gummies than this holiday season. I went to my mom's for Christmas Eve, but I was smart. I popped a microdose gummy and I got that anxiety relieved, the muscle tension gone. I was relaxed. I was in the moment, but I wasn't too stoned to function. It's nice too. I take the sativa for the daytime. So I still feel a little energized. I'm focused, but I'm still relaxed. 
To learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com and use code SHESPEAKS to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Again, that's microdose.com. Use code SHESPEAKS. Microdose.com. Use code SHESPEAKS for 30% off your microdose gummies. I love that. Uh, Okay, so Adriana's like, well, interest rates are high and Todd's business is about loaning. So Todd's business isn't doing that well. So Anna said they're going to have to break the lease on their apartment and find another place. Now, that makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Like, because of the way it was first presented to me, and I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Why would they just come by one day with your special needs son after six years and be like, get out? It makes more sense that they're doing something shady. So yeah, okay, I'm more inclined to believe that. I yes, even though it's coming from mm-hmm. a source that does not favor her, I mm-hmm. that that it does align. I do. I think that they're putting a little bit extra on it, sure, because they hate her. But um, I think the crux of it is correct, probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They're putting a little sp- they put a flare on it, but yeah, there's tr- there's truth to it. Yeah, for sure. But Adriana goes to Julia, I'm telling you because you're my best friend and I trust that you won't say anything. <laughs> Julia can like barely answer. She's like, w- uh, "Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. I'm going to not tell anybody." I also feel like this was like a test for, uh-huh. for, for, to see because I feel like she sees that they're she, that um, Julia is starting to befriend you know mm. her frenemies, mm-hmm. and she needs to see is she still extremely loyal to her. So it's like it's like when a famous person feeds you like information to see to yes, see if you're to the see source. who leaks it exactly. Yeah, like we told you this version, and that's the version that got out. It felt yeah. like that for sure. Yeah, and Julia does not do a very good job making me feel like she won't say anything. Well, I mean, the thing is, it's like she has to make a decision. Mm-hmm. It's like if she doesn't say anything, is she like sh- that means that she's like deciding that she doesn't actually want to build a friendship. But if she yep. does say something, it means that this tight alliance is no more. Mm-hmm. Ooh, what should she pick? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Julia does say she's like, maybe don't be the one to deliver the message. Like, get all the facts before you deliver. AKA, what she's saying here is like, this is my nice way of saying, don't be an idiot and drop this in the group because Alexia may be able to like prove you wrong and it'll just be embarrassing. I think that's good advice because yes, even though I, I think Because Adriana that, is impulsive like that. Yeah, because you don't want to be the stupid one. Like, even yeah. like, don't be too excited about the information, drop it, and not have fact check. Mm-hmm. Be, you got to be 100 if you're going to drop something like that. It, what is that thing? It's like if when I take a shot, I never miss or something. Like, you don't want to take a shot and miss. Yeah, exactly. Because then they're like, ah. I know, I know, I know what you're working with. I know exactly. what's in your arsenal. It's just you got to be, and that is that is where Adriana gets it wrong. Yeah, she never delivers the message right. Mm. All right, Lisa talks to Jody about the conversation she had with the women. Uh, he makes this like he plans this almost identical and romantic night uh, with Lisa, like on her balcony terrace. I don't even know what to call that thing. Pool. I don't know what the fuck to call that. Hmm. That's on a patio. What do you call that? <laughs> I don't know. And the uh, outside, veranda? The veranda, the outside mansion ass. I don't know. Oh, uh, no. But they sit there for that. And Lisa's like, oh, the girls were saying this and that. And he's surprisingly offended that they were bringing up his finances. Then he ta- turns out he's building a new business for the first time in 12 years. So that's like, oh, that made me aware of that. But the thing is, I feel like it's a bad game of telephone. Like, I feel like the way that she communicated to him Mm. that they were at, they were, she made it sound like, I feel like she made it sound like, and they're like trying to question you, like, can you even take care of me? That's not what they said. They said, why should he have to do, to take on all this responsibility? So she's not really, I feel like if Mm. he, he knew in the context of why they were saying it, they were actually quite defending him. They were, yeah. And I, that is not how – I do not believe that's how she related back to him. So I can understand him obviously going to believe his girlfriend of how – she's like, he's not going to question, are you sure that that's what they mm-hmm. said? Like, she's, he's going to take it as fa- at face value as he should. Um, but I, I do not think that she communicated that conversation correctly. No, and I think that uh, he heard what the message really was, though, because then he goes – 
Um, look, I know I get dragged into articles and stuff with like Lenny, but um, it would just be great if you could check in with me sometimes. He's probably heard her complain about them. Yeah, a lot. And he's been like, okay, I really couldn't, I would enjoy if you did some of that. Yeah. She's like, she's like they're like, Jody's not going to put up with it forever. And he's like, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not. And Lisa's like, I'm, apo-, she apologizes and says she doesn't want to make him feel like she's neglecting him. And I'm like, yep, mm-hmm. that's exactly what they said he was going to feel like. Remember Gertie said that in the car? Yeah. Like, I, they didn't say one bad thing about this man. They, yeah. they feel bad for him. Yeah, they do. As they, they should. They like it, they they and they said many times it's not that Jody's a bad guy. It's just that like you're not ready to be able to be with a good person. <laughs> like, I got I felt bad because I could I could tell he's actually kind of stressed. He has that divorce and then he's got clearly this new business. He seems like stressed out and that he's like he's trying to make it seem like he's stronger than he is. Yeah, because she's a mess. She's a fucking mess. Like he doesn't have room to be a mess either. Yes. She's taking up all the mess. Yes. Lisa. Selfish. So she is very selfish. Um, Gertie R- and Russell go bowling with the kids. And then after they bowl for a little bit, she talks about the cancer diagnosis. And like, I was just a crying mess. Miles is scared and she can tell. So she just reaches out and holds his hand. And I was like, okay, bowling. Fine. I'm not going to lie. I had – I was like not really paying attention because I didn't want to be emotional. <laughs> oh, I get that. I, I was like protecting my – like I yep. was like walking around. I was like – I was like, I cannot, I can't, I won't. I don't like, blame you. I don't blame you. It's heavy. It is heavy because it's like, and that's like, like, that's why like Larsa doing that to her was like so triggering because it's like, guys, like she like literally, she doesn't know if she's going to beat this thing yet. Like, and that's the thing. Like we kind of know, did we, she's cancer free now, right? Yes. So we like, that's the only like solace that we have. But at that time, like, She's just beginning her battle and her journey, and it's like she has no idea what the outcome is. Thank God she's cancer free now. But mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, I know God. the start of it. Alexia goes to visit Todd. Alexia visits Todd at his office, and it's a weird meeting of dudes just like talking about nothing in a in a big boardroom. I'm like, what <laughs> meeting was this? <laughs> like, was this a real meeting, or did you just want this stage so that when Alexia came in, she She's could like, be like, "Okay, guys, let me let me get you out of here. It's time for my lady." Yeah, and they weren't I talking like about was, anything. No, that was absolutely stage. Like, look at me, I do stuff. We're not in financial ruin, <laughs> exactly. And they all had like button up. Shirts tucked into pants. Like, they all had, like, the uniform on. Paid like, actors. Yeah. So she shows up in, like, a like a conservative outfit because she's going to meet – she's going to go meet a realtor to look at apartments. Right. So his energy in this whole thing is so odd. She goes, can you give me a price point? He goes, I can give you a whole sheet of a range. What's that? Like, no, there's yeah. – why do you need a whole sheet for it? What's the budget? What's, what's, which, what's, what's your top? What's what your ceiling? We, you don't want to say the number. Okay, okay. And Alexia in her confessional is so Teresa. She's like, Todd knows real estate. So he knows that they're going to be spending – we're going to be spending like forty to $50,000 for a rental. I'm like, I don't know if he knows that. Why don't you guys just buy? I'm why don't gonna, you buy? Like, why are we, like, renting? Like For that nothing, amount of money? There's no, like, there's nothing wrong with renting, but I just think that if you're going to be spending that type of, like, number, like, you should just buy at that point, right? Exactly. That is like, just totally wasting money. Right. You're really, like, you really are, unless, like, I get it if it was, like, oh, we're just renting short term, but you're not. Like you have no plans. You have no plans to buy you because you only buy commercial. Okay. What? Why? I don't. mm. What you? What should be happening if they weren't in financial problems? They would be looking for a house to buy. That's what they would be doing. Right. So that yeah, that gives me pause. It makes me think that all the things that you would need to qualify to be able to purchase a home, they do not have. Yeah. Like they're like. You know how like there can be like some somebody can be like rich but like not because they have like the the uh, status but they are really pretty much just on a line of credit. That's like pretty much what Trump would do all the time. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, I think that's them. Like they have no actual money, but they have all this power. So people just like lend them, or they are at lines of credit. 
That is what it feels like. And Alexia's like dropping hints that she's not happy. She's like, well, I went from living in a house to living in an apartment. I didn't love that. And he's like, you'll go look at apartments and you'll like one and you'll pick one. Uh, no. If you know your wife that you love so much is stressed out, you would be saying, we're going to look at houses. We're going to buy a house. But this is just temporary until we buy the house. Right. Instead, he's being all cagey, like, I don't know if I'm going to tell you my budget. I can send you a whole sheet on it. And like, he's like all bragging. He's like, I'm not stressed because I don't have to do anything. It's Why weird. don't you have to do anything? We need to look, we need to look more into this. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be the topic of Adriana's conversation. Oh. Well, no, they have the rest of the season still. We only got a well, mid-season trailer. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I'm sure this will be something they're digging into. Todd was giving me the creepazoid everything. Like, he was given, like, smooth-talking used car salesman. Yeah, very To Alexia. Car. Yeah, and she's – God, she is Teresa. She is just – Right? Buying it. And But, I like, feel- you can tell she's not buying it. You can tell she doesn't really buy it, but they have – they do that thing for their man where they pretend to buy right, it. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. They're Which like, well, makes it gonna- even weirder for us because we're like, I can tell you don't believe it. Yeah, it's like, ugh, curl. Well, I know. I feel, I feel like she's just attached herself to him so quickly that, yep. I'm a, like, I don't even know, but I, I kind of ass- have making the assumption that they she got with him very quickly after Pretty, her. Uh, yes, I don't remember. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I feel like she attached herself so quickly that she's like, well, I've invested this time. Like, I don't want to start over again. And he clearly was selling her a total bag of goods, you know? He's yeah. like, yeah, I'm loaded and all this bullshit, but really he's like, not. And I feel like she just doesn't want, like, an Adriana to be right about her Totally. Situation. Totally. Lisa and Larsa, they get dinner. Um, Lisa, the motion that Lenny had filed to get full custody or whatever has not gone anywhere. Mm-hmm. And she says, I will be filing a motion to have it retracted. And otherwise, there will be consequences. And I'm like, Lisa, what consequences? He has all the power. That's yeah. why this is so sad for you. There are no consequences you could instill, you could impart on him at this point. Yeah. With what but, money? The money he's not giving you? Yeah. She's in a like real fucked. Yeah. Situation. Just she has no business being like all that, like, oh, there will be consequences. It's like, unfortunately, that there won't. She just needs to like, I don't understand. Just like figure uh-huh. out, just, just figure it out. Like, <laughs> that's all I can say. Just fi- like, I don't, whatever you think you're going to get, you're not. Mm-hmm. Sorry, you're not. You didn't set yourself up for that. This is mm-hmm. why you. This is why we put prenups in place for this very reason. So that mm-hmm. way, it can be very cut and dry, and everybody can go their separate ways. I think he's fighting the prenup. Oh, is that what's happening? I think that's what's happening. Yeah, I think he's fighting it. Mm. I think. But Larsa talks about how she relates to what's what Lisa's going through because Scotty's family doesn't talk to her like she's not she cries even talking about how she's not friends with his sister but i wasn't she messing with a bunch of different guys at the end of that marriage wasn't that what was happening yeah you know um tristan wasn't that right she was with tristan before chloe was with tristan but then like when she was still married right yeah i think so so I'm like, well, that's probably I mean, why I, they don't want to fuck with you. I was like, when Larsa was saying that, I just, I kept on being like, w- you think that they would want to fuck with you? You're messy as fuck. Like, you are, you're dating his, I don't know how many times I have to say this. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know why you don't understand that that's not normal. Like, they're like, they're questioning your integrity because it should be questioned. Because we are too. So... And honestly, they probably never liked you, to be real. They were putting up with you. <laughs> it's true. Like, there's plenty of people. I'm, like, I'm not going to say that out loud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you put up with them. You and put then up when, with them, yeah. And then when the person, your family member breaks up with them, you're like, great. Don't have to deal with that anymore. Like, <laughs> that's what, like, you can like they would, you would never know I didn't like you. Like, <laughs> some nice. <laughs> I feel like I can. You could, you're talking to someone so specific. I am. <laughs> I am so good. <laughs> Lisa apologizes to Larsa for not checking in with her enough. She's like, oh, I know I've been selfish. And literally at that very moment, she gets the alert on her phone to check in with Jody. This woman 
calls Jody and says, hey, babe, I just got an alert on my phone to check in with you and your feelings. And he's like, my feelings are good. And she's <laughs> like, is there anything you need to discuss? He's like, nope, we're good. She's God. like, okay, love, I'll check on you again at 830. That's so weird. Larsa's like, D- do you not know how to do stuff like that? Like, you don't tell them I got a notice to check in on you because what that's still doing, Lisa, is making it about you. Yeah. Look at, look at me checking in on you. I have alerts set on my phone. Look at me checking on you. And he's like, that's not how you do it. It doesn't feel like you actually care about what I have to say. Absolutely. Seems like a chore. Yeah. You have an alarm set because you don't think about me enough. And it feels rushed. It's like, do you? Don't, yeah. Like, I, it doesn't, you don't really want me yeah. to talk. You want me to just be like, G- I'm good. And then so you can move on with your lunch. Bullshit. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's mm-hmm. like you – what are you really giving to this relationship is my question. Agreed. Because another thing is aren't you just going to like see him at some point like later? Wouldn't you then just be like, so how are you doing? Right. It needs to be organic. Like actually ask a question maybe like how was your day? Listen. If it's – he says something specific, be like, oh, like how did that – like, you know, like <laughs> I don't know. Do I, what the fuck? Do I have to explain how to like have exactly. a conversation <laughs> Someone? Like, this is so bizarre that That's you need crazy. this laid out, Lisa. That's wild. <laughs> what is the matter with her? Like, As I was saying it, I was like, this is e- ridiculous. She even <laughs> says, I'm with Larsa right now, but like, anything you want to talk about? No, not really in front of Larsa. No. God. On speakerphone at a dinner. She's seriously missing some social cues. Girl. I'm not yeah. saying that Lenny is a good person, but I could <laughs> oh, see. <no. laughs> I could see why maybe there was some trouble in paradise. <laughs> like I don't know. Honestly, that's this is how not you roll looking, in a relationship. This is, this is not looking good for her. This is not good evidence that you were a great wife. I'm just saying. You're not being a really great girlfriend, so I don't see the – I don't know your <laughs> – You're fucking <laughs> calling him – Saying, I just got an alert on my phone to check on you. So, hey, you, how are your feelings? Well, this I well, I definitely know if she can't do it in this loving relationship with someone who loves her, she was definitely not doing it in her loveless marriage. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how that's why she does it because they they probably never really spoke. Exactly. <laughs> totally. She's like, I actually don't know how to check in on someone. Yeah. Well, okay. wonderful. Uh, Mama Sita <laughs> brunch. They all get denim jackets, custom denim jackets. I from love anything Nicole. custom. My goodness. Okay. There's a poet there. That this is like a new rich people party thing. Yeah. The poet person. And you're like, I- thanks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've had anytime I've had it. I've only had it done like twice because I've only been in like two fancy parties. But I was just like, then there no were one, poets there. There were poets, and you went over and you told them like your name and some stuff about you, and they wrote a little poem, and you're like, oh, cool. Was it good? Was it? A I good don't poem? remember. Oh, it wasn't good then. But I'm also not like when it comes to poetry, like haiku, shit like that. I don't know what makes poetry poetry. So I don't know. Someone who what? understands poetry might have been like, yeah, poetry is fun because you're never wrong. Like, okay. you can, you're just writing your feelings. I was into, like, writing poems for, like, a hot second, but that was just because we were doing it in school. Ah. And I was writing lots of poems. They probably were bad. Um, but <laughs> what makes a poem a poem? Depends what kind of poem. There are some poems that have you have to actually rules, have. right? Th- yeah, there's some poems that there are actual, like, rules. Like, you have yeah, like to, a like, a haiku. Yeah, but, or you could just do a free, free for, like, flowing whatever. A poem can be anything you want it to be. I think. Okay, so... Maybe that's why I don't like them. Because <laughs> I'm like, cool. I don't know. It's a bunch of bullshit. That's like, why. I could write a bunch of words too, dude, and call it a poem. Yeah. And then like no one was over with the poor people. Like they're just sitting there by themselves for the majority of the party. Cause that's okay. Are, they got paid. And people are like, did you want a poem? They're like, I'm good. And they're just like. It's just funny because I feel like all these fancy parties, like they go out of their way to get these like custom things. Yeah. And most time their guests don't acknowledge yes. or care. Yes. But if it wasn't there, they would have been like, where was the that. where was the things? Where was the whatever? They would Where was the that. mermaid in the glass? Yes. The giant glass. <laughs> exactly. Flapping around. Like they don't want to acknowledge it, but it better be there. Yep. They will notice it later. <laughs> 
Okay. What is this, honey? For all you babes out there who have a taste for the finer things in life, but the budget that doesn't match, I see you, I feel you, I am you. Well, that's why I like Quince, because Quince is my go-to for luxury essentials, but they got those affordable prices. They offer a wide range of high-quality items at prices within reach, like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters from $50, washable silk tops and dresses, organic cotton sweaters, 14-karat gold jewelry. The best part, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. What Quince does? is they partner with top factories directly. So they cut out the cost of the middleman and pass the savings to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. And I love that. I got a day robe. Ever heard of it? I hadn't either. And I live in it. And I feel like a queen. I also got a really great pair of yoga pants, not see-through. I can wear them when I'm working out, not worry about that, but they fit nice. They hold me in top notch. Give yourself the luxury you deserve with Quince. Go to quince.com slash she speaks for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash she speaks to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash she speaks. Not well, bitch. I know I talk a lot about different meal kits, but Hungry Root is more than a meal kit. It is now my true number one favorite because you get groceries. You can put in, I don't want to ever cook. And they show you a list of really great, healthy, ready-made foods. It's all delivered to your door. I've discovered different brands of snacks that are all amazing and healthy and delicious. You take a fun, short quiz and Hungry Root will get to know you, your goals, how you like to eat. They'll ask what flavors you like, which kitchen appliances you use. For me, like none. I don't want to touch a kitchen appliance. They got me. And then they'll keep your needs and preferences top of mind and they start building your cart with delicious recipes and all of your grocery needs for the week. You can take their suggestions or you can choose anything you want. Like I just start over from scratch just because I like to browse online, but you'll have a cart that's built and you could say keep, keep or make maybe five more of those. I don't know. They get fresh, high quality produce, meat, seafood, pantry staples, healthy snacks, sweets, so much more. Hungry Root goes beyond your weekly grocery haul with thousands of easy recipes that actually put your groceries to good use before they get forgotten about in the back of your fridge. Mm Mm-hmm. That's me. Spend less time meal planning, shopping, and cooking, and much more time enjoying healthy food that you'll actually love with Hungry Root. Right now, Hungry Root is offering She Speaks Bravo listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash She Speaks to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash She Speaks. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. The rumors and nastiness about her. Lisa picks up Larsa in her housekeeper's car. That was not doing what she thought it was going to do. Not Lisa using her housekeeper's actual, real, everyday car that she drives for real. Like, for example, to work, like where she cleans your house, Lisa. You're using that to be like, see how poor I could be? Like... You need this is a practical car and it got you to where you were going. That's what I saw. And she better have filled that motherfucking gas tank up when she returned it to her housekeeper. Uh, Right? She probably didn't. She probably didn't because she's probably never pumped gas in her life. She's confused how that works. She sent she sent someone else to do it. Ask them to go do it. That's what they do for me, she said. Oh my God. It was a practical yeah. car. I, like there was nothing wrong yeah, with that car. Nothing See, wrong with that fucking car. It's like when you like you were younger and you would throw a tantrum and you'd be like, "See, see, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna pun- punish you and show your parent." Your parents like, "No, it's completely fine. You're fine." Mm-hmm. Like oh, that yeah. is like, <laughs> it's like, no, I wanted you to see I'm suffering. Like you're yeah. not suffering because you got from point A to point B, and that's what we've been saying. Be practical, bitch. Mm-hmm. That's. Okay. God. She's really not doing herself a lot of favors. Also, it's your housekeepers. It's like your housekeeper. housekeeper. Yours. You you could pay her more money. She could buy a nice car. It's just like, it's like the wealth disparity always kills me. God. It's very, it's very hard. It's very hard. I know. 
Kiki gets to the party and she notices that Anna is on one of the place cards. This is where I was like, Nicole, you are busted. I'm so sorry. Everyone, every single human being knows that Anna hates Alexia and Marisol. Marisol especially. Mm. And the other reason I know she's lying is, you know when you you also hate someone? Mm-hmm. Like Marisol, for example. And when they show the flashback of the reunion where Nicole was, where Andy asked, does anyone keep in touch with Anna? And Alexia and Marisol both go, hell no. And Nicole goes, yeah, she reached out to me like a week ago. And duh, because you're feuding with Marisol. Mm. There is no fucking way they didn't discuss Marisol when they had a conversation. Yeah. Just this, there is no way. This is my first because I'm new to this uh, yeah, franchise. That's I mean, this I'm is curious my, to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I was like, oh, no, not my doctor lady being messy over here. She was. Because, like, I don't even know the dynamics, but I I feel like mm, I wouldn't have invited her or would have given, given somebody a heads up. It seems a little, like, set up. Very like, much. Didn't know you were going to be that type of gal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was so intrigued. It was, absol- <laughs> like, it was absolutely – and I'm not mad at her because, again, it's Alexia and Marisol, so I don't care. But it – Nicole, like – I, I kind of was agree with Alexia. Like, I sort of wish Nicole had been like, well, I know they didn't get along. I thought maybe it could be fun if they could talk. Yeah. But instead, she's like, why would – she also said a couple – Nicole, when, like, she's fighting with them, she said a couple things that made me think, okay, this was – this definitely was her uh, on purpose. Because she yeah. says to Marisol, why would I know that? You don't tell me things. Or something like that. I'm like, so – Okay. See what I'm saying? Like now she's yeah. like, she can, that's, that was giving herself away. Also, why would I know that? No, if you know Anna in terms of you're a cast member on of Miami, you also know she hates them. There's no I'm, way. Yeah. And that's, I, I picked up on it really fast and I am not in the universe at all. Like there's, yeah. she needed to own it. Yep. She and ne- you know, that's you all. know what, another thing, you know, when you hate someone, you are paying attention to when shit is being talked about them. Yeah, and there oh, absolutely. Was, there were article. There were like posts and articles and th- um, of the of the episode that Anna and her daughter did, talking about Marisol and Alexia. Like there were all kinds of page sixes and TMZs and stuff reporting on it. You know she knows that. Yeah, I would if I hate someone. I'm like, what else did they do? You know what I, I mean? She should have just been like, I I'm friends with her. I wanted her to come, and I knew that if I told you uh, that she was coming, you weren't weren't going to come. So yes, I and I yeah, I was just hoping you'd uh, be okay with it when you got here. And but you're, you're not. not. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not. Oops. Alexia says, keeps saying this, like, Marisol, I don't stick up for you, but right now I'm sticking up for you. <laughs> she keeps saying that. I'm like, stop bragging that you don't stick up for your friend. I never stick up for you, but on this one, I'm going to stick up for you. Okay? <laughs> remember that, That's a remember this because I'm going to need a favor that, later. That's 100% what When I is. have to dodge these financial yes, ruins. these financial ruins. <laughs> Rumors. As I'm looking that. for a new apartment. Yeah. We're also back, Alexia, back me up, bitch. <laughs> Alexia even said, I forgot to mention in that scene, she said, Well, I don't want to get anything smaller or downgrade. And Todd doesn't say, Well, no, 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 nothing like that. No, he just he's just like, Well, well, that's not on the spreadsheet that I won't show you. <laughs> that's not on the spreadsheet. Or the places this realtor is gonna be taking you that I've already picked out. <laughs> like he already has like his little condo that he's gonna put her in and she doesn't even know <laughs> she has no idea <laughs> it's like have fun looking at things you'll never be able to get he's like i already signed a lease on another yeah. place <laughs> they you know they do that on like uh house hunters like they they've already like gotten a house and then like, oh i they, do know that yeah my cousin was on house hunters really? and that's how i yeah that's, and that's how, how you I, know yeah, I was like, she's like, she already had the house. So she just pretended to <laughs> So you look. have to walk in and be like, I don't know if I like this place. Yeah. I kind of took a little of the allure because I actually get, no, get really I, into it. It wasn't too long ago, maybe like two, three years ago now that I found out that all those house shows were lies. And I was like, oh, wow. Why did I really believe I know, and it's this like the sh- whole time? Like, I should know. We should know. Right. But I was like, I don't know. I just really like. I do too, you yeah. know. Yeah. Nicole also gives herself away in this moment, in her confessional. She says, I knew they weren't as close as they had been in the past, but I didn't expect it to create this chaos. I'm like, okay, so you knew. 
Yeah, you're lying. You should have not even if like that gave that's given it away. You don't want to be like, I knew there was a little something, but like, why? How would I know? Mm-mm-mm. I don't like when someone does something really shady and then they don't know how to be shady. Yeah. Ex- yes. Nicole yeah. actually, I think, does do that. Like, she sent Larsa a mirror last season. So to, that like, she look could, at like, herself? look at herself. Yeah. <laughs> but it had, like, funny. writing on it and stuff. But, like, so I think it was Alexia. They were like, I don't think that she was the one who came up with that or wrote that. Like, someone in her, like, team, someone, like, on her team came up with it. Because she's actually oh. not, like, naturally shady like that and that is evident in these moments she's like drew sedora she's just over it's too much production in her her shades C- yeah mm-hmm. too much production like you yeah. went to the you went to the you don't know oh, with the goddamn goddamn pie. yeah the fruit like, that didn't even work it was you didn't even get a peach i know like and then like you don't even have a dog so you went to a dog store and yes you bought all that stuff and you don't even own a dog so it's just like it's kind of sad it's too much too much production yeah Totally. Here's the interesting part. Julia is stopping Marisol from leaving. And she's saying, you have to talk to her. You have to talk to her. I'm assuming she means talk to Anna, right? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Or did she mean, why would she mean Nicole? She meant Anna. Stay and talk to Anna. The reason I point that out is because in the mid-season trailer, you see Julia confronting Adriana on camera because in Julia's confessional, horrible confessional look, by the way, with the martini glass earrings. Oh, yeah. I was thinking how tacky that looked. Atrocity. An, a true atrocity. Like, who the fuck was like, this is it. <laughs> no notes. Garcelle stylist. Garcelle stylist. That's who. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Julia, Julia's like, I'm piecing together with what Adriana told me earlier in the car. And then now here's Anna. And I'm like, Adriana, how could you? And she's really going to like pawn this off on Adriana as like she's totally innocent. In the mid-season trailer, you see her like, and you knew about it. And Adriana mm-hmm. go, you knew about it too. And leaves. And I feel like Adriana's so mad because she's like, I fucking told you I invited Anna. Yeah. And Julia's trying to play the other the other t- other other side of it. I mean, she did put her in a pe- a peculiar situation because she knew that she was going to have to pick sides and mm-hmm. Julia didn't And that's Ju- why she did it. And, and yeah, so like I can't I'm not going to feel too bad for Adriana in this because I feel like she purposely did that to make Julia either have to like or like make uh the girls hate Julia so that they can form a friendship. So I'm not like I kind of like that Julia is uh, throwing her under the bus a little bit. Yeah, shake up the dynamics. Yeah, I like. I think she's Julia is more interesting going against Adriana because the past three seasons now she's always been like Adriana's ride or die, even when uh-huh. Adriana's been in the wrong. Mm-hmm. But it is to me kind of proving that Julia is not the like innocent little angel, right? Because right. she she kind of plays that part, and I'm like, aha, she's a little more, a little a little bit sneakier. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I've always been able to spot it. I don't even, and I don't, I'm kind of confused as to why, like, Julia is wanting so badly to make up with Alexia. Um, I feel like maybe, I feel like I saw, saw a little turn in her when Adriana, I feel like, crossed the line with her in saying, like, you can't, I'm not going to have certain people at her fuck cancer thing. And that was her pride and joy, baby. Oh. And it's like, you're not going to be like, don't, don't come between me and my, my wife. And like, oh. I feel like, I feel like that kind of got her looking at her a little bit sideways. Okay. I, like that's I could crack see in the I foundation. Could see, I could see. It's like, hmm. you know, you have that friend, you're like, you. I like put up with a lot of things, but this one thing was not something mm. I wanted you to touch, and I can put up with a lot of things, but not this. And she was she was kept it cute, because she did still need the venue, <laughs> but, <Yes. laughs> but she was like, I feel like she, that's when I start, I, I noticed her being a little bit more uh, vocal about disagreeing with her on, yeah. on things. Yeah. That's, that's the journey, I feel like. Adriana's, Adriana has done a lot and put Julia in peculiar situations of having to yeah. defend her. And I think Julia's like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. Yeah. Every single year. 
Especially if Adriana is going to have the conversations with Alexia and Marisol trying to make up with them Mm -hmm. and make it appear like she's on good terms with them only to like not really be. That's maybe that's also part of it. Mm -hmm. All in all, this cast, there's the dynamics. There are so many different dynamics happening. Alexia and Nicole, Adriana and Marisol, Gertie and Larsa, Julia and Adriana, Kiki and Lisa, Lisa and Larsa, Adriana and Larsa. All those different dynamics happening. That's layered. It is layered. That is layered. Um, All right, guys. Well, have a happy new year. I don't know. When will I be recording next? Let's see. Saturday? Oh, yeah. that's. I don't know if there's a new Southern Charm episode. Are you fucking kidding me? There may be. I don't know, though. Let me look it up right now. I am literally going to be beside myself. I might be. Hold on. Hold on. I look forward to it every week. Uh, Today. Yeah, I don't think there is a new episode today. Or let's see, tomorrow. No. Yeah, so no new episode. So this is going to be the last time we record in 2023. Wow, what a year, guys. What a year. What a year is right, though, actually. It's a long, long year. It's been a long year. Actually, I feel opposite. You think it's been a short year? Like, it's still, like, 2022 was long, and then 2023 feels like it was nothing, and we're already in 2024. Okay, I I agree. Right? Like, 2022. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, this, it feels like I, it feels like it should be May. I'm like, yeah, it's December going into January. So I'm like, okay, well, let me try. Let me try to live more in the moment, maybe. I guess in 2024, so that I can enjoy it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I feel like my 2024 will be jam packed. I feel like I'm going to do a lot of traveling next year. Ooh, where are you going? Going you to have London. weddings, right? You have weddings to go to. Well, I have like one of my friends' weddings. Uh, the one that's in Africa has moved to 2025 now. Okay. Um, but Bailey's wedding is in Spain. In September, I think. Nice. I've never been to Spain, and I I was supposed Neither to go for Tyler's wedding when the pan then the pandemic mm. happened, and then they ended up, you know, not being able to do that, and then they just did it in San Diego where they live. Mm. So I've been wanting to go to Spain. That's gonna be fun. But and, and you're doing London with Sean, right? Yes, London with Sean. And Are you gonna go we wedding want- venue? Yes, 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 I am. Um, didn't we want to go on a trip? <laughs> we did. We have to figure out when. Yeah, when it coordinates with when you can get out of work. Yeah. What a what a year we have ahead. Excuse me. Uh, okay, guys. Well, have a happy new year. And we'll see you in 2024. In 2024. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching and for listening to She Speaks Bravo with Emily Hanks. If you haven't already, would you mind leaving a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you listen? That would be amazing. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell so you don't miss an episode. And if you're looking for more content, more exclusive bonus content, check out the Patreon. I post two exclusive episodes a month and I'm covering just the Bravo jams like classic Roni, Atlanta, and of course Vanderpump Rules. If you just want to support the show, head to buymeacoffee.com slash She Speaks Bravo and buy me a coffee or two or five. We also have merch available at shespeaksbravo.com. And if you're interested in hearing my takes on non-Bravo shows, check out my new podcast, She Speaks It All. I cover the challenge, drag race, and any other show I'm obsessed with that's not Bravo. She Speaks It All is available everywhere you get your podcasts, just like this show. Make sure you're following me on the social medias. I am She Speaks Bravo across all platforms. Thank you so much for any support you give the show, even if it's just listening. Appreciate you. Love you. Mean it. I'll see you soon.